welcome back to our YouTube channel, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for your continued support. Raila's bid to becoming the African Union Commission chairman got a boost when William Ruto, through the office of the chief cabinet secretary, reiterated their firm support to this course. You know, when Raila first announced that he wanted to expand his wings and become the African Union Commission chairperson, some people felt that this was another plan for William Ruto to manage him the way others have claimed that Uhuru managed him. Remember when they had a handshake with Uhuru, he was uh, seconded and he became the African Union representative on infrastructure. Um, uh, infrastructure, yes. And when he was supported with the deep state, by the deep state to become the president, something happened and he was not announced by Chebukati. So when he announced his bid, some people thought this is another plan that William Ruto has crafted. A number of his supporters wanted him to stay put, not to go to the AU, but others felt that Baba should go there and uh, calm down Kidogo and uh, think about whether he, was be, he will be coming back in 2027 or retire while there. And of course, you know very well that William Ruto had said that uh, they would work, his government would work very closely with Raila and support him. But some people had their doubts. So by yesterday, there was an invite by the office of the chief minister, Musalem Davadi, that they would have a joint briefing together with Raila Molo Dinga. So they expected uh, the media personality and all the stakeholders to converge just to understand what the UDA government has in store for Raila Molo Dinga. So today, Raila went there with his team. I saw Opio and I and a host of other friends. And first they had uh, an indoor meeting with Musalem Dabadi and uh, I think Musalem Dabadi briefed him and he also briefed Musalem Dabadi of his level of preparedness and they discussed other pertinent matters. Then they came out and this is the briefing that we were given by Musalem Dabadi. Fruitful meeting and progressive discussions we have had this morning. As you already know, the right honorable Raila Odinga is Kenya's candidate for the chairmanship of the African Union Commission in the elections slated for February next year, that is 2025. Ladies and gentlemen, on this, we have a visionary leader to fire up the African Union to greater levels. The Right Honorable Raila is a Pan-Africanist who naturally espouses the Think Africa Above All guiding principle of the AU Commission. Indeed, he holds dear the African Union's ambition of being a people-centered organization. The candidates' experience and leadership philosophy align with the AU's Commission's values of efficiency, professionalism, and respect for diversity. We have no doubt the candidate will pursue excellence in line with the continent's collective aspirations of the Africa we want in 2063 as framed in the AU's development framework of Agenda 2063. The Secretariat will prepare all the briefs for use by the candidates, develop campaign materials, including digital presence, and prepare for the public debate to be broadcast live to African citizens. This will take place six months before 
the election date. Currently, the team is firming up preparatory and application documents together with requisite translations of the resume into six AU languages. That is French, English, Kiswahili, Arabic, Portuguese, and Spanish. This should be ready for submission to the AU Secretariat by the end of June 2024. An empirical campaign strategy has been developed which includes identifying opportunities, challenges, and risks that our candidature faces. Additionally, the campaign involves outreach programs to capitals of AU member states, briefing of Kenya missions abroad, and engagements. In that briefing, I picked out a few things. One, when Raila declared his uh, intention to vie for that position, he did not take his, uh, his uh, application documents, the resume and all that, because we are being told that I think there is a, a, head, a deadline by June, just a few, a few months from today. And uh, the government of the day is committed to ensuring that they enhance that process. And I also realized that uh, when they agreed together with William Ruto, there was a kind of probation. It is Raila was. It's like Raila was uh, looking at William Ruto's seriousness on this, and William Ruto was also looking at Raila's seriousness on this. And between the time Raila said that he wanted to become the chairman, and now. A few things have happened. One, you must have realized that the relationship between Ruto and Museveni was restored after a very long strained relationship. They had disagreed on some matters. And we were informed that it was Raila who brought them together, a kind of reconciliation. And we have also realized that uh, Raila took a low profile and most of the things, the way he used to criticize the government is now being done by the other people, people like the minority leader, Babu Owino. But Raila, I think, has taken a low profile because the other African Union presidents who are supposed to be endorsing him or voting him in that position might not want to see him as a very obstinate politician, a leader who is rocking the government from within. But I wanted to just figure out what does it mean for Raila Monodinga and why this joint press briefing and why should William Ruto reiterate his commitment to Raila as far as the African Union Commission chairmanship is concerned. The timing is very significant if you look at it. And that is where I want to begin with. Allow me to request you to subscribe to our channel if you are watching for the first time. Click the notification bell to allow YouTube to notify you and please give us many likes so that our videos can be recommended to more people. To all our subscribers, thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, why am I saying that the timing is very significant? William Ruto recently jetted out to the USA. And he carried with him, or Pio and I, who is the minority leader, very close ally to Raila. The Mabei governor, Gladys Wanga, Nyawangaya, was also there. And of course, Ovinia Deti representing Kalonzo. So there was uh, a Zimio coalition was represented. When Raila went to the streets and there were a lot of altercation between him and the president, William Ruta appealed to the international community, those who gave him that power. And Joe Biden sent the Delaware Senator Chris Coons, who came and brokered a peace between the two leaders. And they were actually forced to sit down and talk. And that is why we had that NADCO report at Boomers. 
So this is a follow-up. Because when William Ruto was in the US, you realize that before he jetted out, Meg Whitman, who's the ambassador to, uh, to Kenya, US ambassador to Kenya, held a meeting with Raila Molodinga. And uh, I think it was paving a way just to, to, it was to ensure, to assure him of uh, that support. So this is a follow-up. Because I believe that William Ruto was instructed to ensure that he fast tracked this process, oil that campaign, former secretariat to ensure that Raila succeeds. Because without Raila going to the AU, William Ruto would find it very rough, I can assure you, because Kenyans are tired. So it is, I see the hand of Joe Biden in this, because William Ruto recently came from the US. Number two, the NADCO report is about to be endorsed. And in that report, Musalem Mdabadi has a stake. His office is going to be entrenched in the constitution so that it becomes official. And the report that is contained in the NADCO is going to be endorsed in parliament. And so this is also part and parcel of the whole process of sitting down in Bomas and what they came up with. It is also a confirmation to the African nations that the Kenyan government is with Raila Bolodinga. There had been rumors that maybe there is lack of seriousness between Ruto and Raila. And others had even thought that William Ruto was backstabbing Raila, that he was supporting another candidate. And so this is an endorsement that is a message to the African leaders that we stand firm with Raila Odinga and therefore give him the much needed support so that it is not seen as if it is only the outsiders who are endorsing Raila, but there is no that much needed support. The time is also inching very closely and that is why there is that commitment. That's why the government is assuring Raila of their support, including that resume and all the documents are going to be translated into five, five languages. The Azimio supporters are also being given a coded message that we are with Raila Molodinga. And why is it important even to the Azimio supporters and the Azimio leadership? William Ruto is facing tough times of his political career. The high taxes are here, the finance bill 2024 is here with us, and it is a way of trying to massage Raila Odinga and his supporters to go slow. Because if they start doing already, you've seen opposition leaders, you've seen the church, you've seen people taking a stand and they're saying, this time around we're not going to allow these punitive taxes. So it is a way of calming them down. William Ruto's relationship with this deputy is also coming to question vis-a-vis -vis the endorsement of Raila. Because if there is something experts feel that uh, Uhuru is looking for, is that when they reconcile with Rigedi Gashagwa, that they would want to convince Raila to start with them, they might even endorse Raila to start early campaigns so that they make life very difficult for William Samoy Ruto. And so, because you've seen of recent, these people are not reading from the same page, Rigadi Gashagwa and his boss. And Raila is at the middle, is in the middle. The side that will convince him to sit together with him will succeed. If Raila joins Uhuru today and says, I don't want the AU thing, it will be a very doomed, it will be a doomsday for William Samoy Ruto. Life will be very difficult if they team together to get a And if he endorses the government's position and works very calmly with him, then regard is going to find it very difficult because he will not have any solace. And that's why I believe that the timing is very, very important. So it has formed uh, the subject of discussion, but I feel 
that the instruction came from Joe Biden himself to ensure that they implement what they told what, or what they promised Raila Molodinga. But it's also coming at a time when William Ruto, Ruto needed Raila Molodinga more than ever. I don't know what to think, but that is my take.